Hello everyone and welcome to another video by the Robox Academy. And in this video, we'll be exploring where to position your CCTV camera and we'll be looking at lens angles also. By the end of this video, my goal is to ensure you understand the fundamentals of these, of fitting a CCTV camera so that you can get the most out of your system. Now we'll be referring to this document which I used to use when I was an installer and it's published by the Home Office and it's the CCTV Operational Requirements Manual uh, which was published in 2009 which is some time ago but it's got a lot of core principles which are very helpful when you're fitting and designing your system. Now we, we know CCTV cameras are designed to monitor human activity but the application can vary. Uh, from observation to identifying an individual to allowing a car access into a gate. There are hundreds if not thousands of different applications and this document gives four examples. I have left a link to the description. Uh, sorry, I have left a link in the description for you to download this. Um, and we're, we're referring to pages eight and nine. There are also two very important questions which sound very simple. Uh, which come up on page eight, which is what do I need to see and why do I need to see it? We'll go into more depth on these questions a little bit later, but let's explore these four examples for now. Okay, so this page gives four examples, which is detect, observe, recognize, and identify. Now, how they've determined this is the proportion of the height of the individual in proportion to the length of the display and the monitor. So if we look at detect, it's about 10%. And then when we go to identify, we're at 100%. So if you can imagine a person walks into a shop, a camera looking at that front door, in order to, in order to identify them, would have to have anything between really 60 to 100% of that portion should be the length of that monitor. And that way you can ensure you're gonna get a great image. Now we're just gonna pay attention to these two for now, which is observe and identify. Like I said before, these are not, there's nothing official here, it's just rough guide um, principles. So we can see here, when, it's, when we're observing, the proportion of the height of the individual in relation to the monitor's length is about 25%. And when you're identifying, it's about 100%. I'm going to give you two real-life examples for these. So if we take the application of traffic monitoring, if you're a traffic operator, what is your goal? If we apply the two questions that we found in the document on page 8, which is, what do I need to see? Well, if I'm the traffic operator, I want to see the motorway and monitor the traffic. Why do I want to see it? Well, traffic monitoring to monitor the cars, any accidents, um, so any emergency response can be sent. Therefore, there's no need to identify a number plate or identify the actual driver in the car. If we take the same example of a car at now a barrier, where the core principle here is to identify as opposed to observe. And how do we know this? Well, if we apply the two questions, what do I need to see? The registration of the car. Why do I need to see it? To see if it have, has authorized access through the gate, and therefore you can grant it, grant the car access for parking. And thereby, it becomes more important for the camera to be, to be positioned as such to identify the number plate, and therefore deciding on lens types of lenses and where you're fitting the camera becomes the next challenge. Now the problems when you don't address these questions is you end up finding images like this which even to this day despite all the advancements in, in technology uh, we are still finding images like this on our news channels and why is that? Well really it's a failure of the, the installer um, in the system design and the problem also is when you fail to design the system properly you end up compromising by spending huge amounts of money on the latest features and gimmicks, but not actually applying the core principles of what a security system is meant to do. So I'm gonna give you a real life example of how do you apply this, uh, these ideas when you're fitting cameras in your home. 
Well, let's take these two uh, variables. One is observe. When might you want to observe? Well, let's say you've got a driveway. Your goal there is not to identify, let's say, who's walking on the pathway. Although cameras nowadays with their advance, advancements in you know, 2 to 8 megapixel and beyond, but on average, the average CCTV camera now is high definition. So you do get some form of identification anyway. But if we take this example of a driveway, you want the proportion of the individual to be a lot smaller so that you can monitor a wider area. Let's say the front driveway where your guests who might come to visit you are parked. The, an observational style of camera gives some security in that application. However, when someone approaches your front door, then your goal becomes to identify the individual and therefore the proportion of their, their heights in relation to the length of the monitor, the percentage increases. Um, and that's because your, your goal is to identify who's at the front door. General rule of thumb, by the way, is any entry or exit areas you want to be able to identify. So therefore, if you have a front door, you don't want the camera, let's say, right at the top of the house. You'd want it right next to the um, right next to the door. And hence the popularity in front uh, doorbell cameras. Now, when it comes to installing your camera, there are two variables. One is the distance from the object of capture, and the second is the lens of the camera. Um, so let's break this down to give you a better idea. Now if we look at distance, now assuming the camera is a fixed lens camera, it seems quite obvious the closer we move the camera to the object, the more we'll be able to identify them. So if we apply this principle when you're fitting a camera in your home, assuming the camera is a fixed lens, and we're going to go into lens a little bit later, but assuming the camera has a fixed lens, in order to observe an individual in, let's say, your front driveway, you'd want to move the camera physically further away back. Um, however, these days, when you have a 2.8mm, let's say, camera, again, we'll go into this a bit, a little bit later, a wide-angle camera, if you look at position 2, uh, seems to be a, an ideal scenario. Now, you've got to be careful, and obviously, each system will have differences because in this example I wouldn't actually fit a camera at position 2 because of the the roof hatch and therefore I'd use position 1 which is further up and actually in order to gain access for cable entry um, position 1 allows you to easily go through the loft however if let's say that roof wasn't there we'd still run the cable through position 1 but bring the, the wiring down to about position 2 where the camera is out of range, but it's uh, it's at a it's at a medium kind of height to allow general security of your front drive. Again, the camera is usually able to capture a, a, some form of identification, but the purpose is to observe a wider area. Sometimes even going as far as your neighbor's driveways, if they're happy with that. Um, sometimes that can actually help. You can help with neighborhood security by doing this, as long as you're not. Um, breaking any GDPR rules. So always check with your neighbors when you are fitting cameras. So that's an example of an observational type where you want to be able to see more. Um, you do, the, the goal is not to identify the individual at that point, at least in that area. The goal is to observe what's happening in the surrounding area from your, uh, from your front door, from your home. If we take identifying and again, assuming the camera has a fixed lens, well, then we'd want to bring the camera closer to that entry exit point, which in this case is your front door. And again, hence the you know the the, the boom in front doorbell cameras. Um, I think is a fantastic form of security. Sometimes you you know for a for a less than a hundred dollars or a hundred quid, you know you can get a doorbell camera for even cheaper these days. Um, but it's a uh, it's it you're getting closer to that principle of identifying by bringing that camera closer to the object. Okay, and now moving on to CCTV lenses. Uh, I know many of you, when you're purchasing, uh, whether it's a home or business system, you're, you'll inevitably come across uh, the lens option, the desirable lens option for your camera. Um, so we're gonna explore that in a little bit more depth here.
Now there are two types of lenses. You have a fixed lens, which are cheaper, and then a variable lens, which are more expensive. A variable lens allows you to pick within a range, so you'll see something like a 2.8 to 12 mil, and really it allows you to tweak the lens angle almost perfectly for what exactly you need to see. Um, fixed lens cameras, like I said, they're cheaper, and more often than not, most kits you'll find have got fixed lenses. Now, when you're moving up, so when you're looking at things like pan tilt and zoom cameras, you'll you'll see, although they're pricier, uh, the reason they are pricier is often due to the lens. The telephoto lens can sometimes cost more than the actual camera module. And you'll see even bigger numbers. You'll see numbers like 5 to 50 mil or 5 to 150 mil and going up to, well, it, it, they go up significantly. When you're purchasing a pan tilt zoom camera, you'll inevitably see numbers like 25 times zoom. But when you look at the actual lens and you pay attention to the range, you'll get an idea of what you're able to see. Now, if we were to just scale the lens numbers up, so having 2.8 mil on the left and 12 on the right hand side, this is quite a popular lens in the variable lens game. Um, but we're using it just to show you how it works. So generally, the higher the number, the narrower the lens. And the lower the number, the wider the lens. And you'll see either 2.8 or 3.6 seem to be the most popular types of cameras. Some manufacturers, when you're ordering, they allow you to select different lens options. So if you know, let's say, you need a 12 millimeter fixed lens, um, you can some, some manufacturers allow you to select that. But more often than not, majority of the cameras sold are wide angle 2.8 or a 3.6 millimeter. So if we take an example of a fixed lens, a 2.8 mil, and apply it to fitting a camera in that same position we looked at earlier, which was position one, then you're gonna get an observational style of camera. Now, if this same, in the same position, if you were to use a variable lens, and let's say you've got a 2.8 to 12 mil, well, what that allows you to do is decide where you want the camera uh, sorry, where you want the, um, whether you want to identify or observe the object. So by fitting the camera in the exact same position, you're able to zoom in all the way and um, you can identify. Now, we're not saying this is what you should do in a home. It's just to give you an example because one issue with fitting a camera higher up at that position one is you're getting a top-down kind of view. You don't get a, a direct elevation and therefore a front doorbell camera is going to be more effective but it's just to show you that if you knew you need to identify this area or let's say let's take this same example and let's say from that position one you wanted to be able to identify anyone walking through the front gate of the property now a 2.8 mil lens won't be able to do that it can possibly observe and capture some information on the individual walking in the gate but if i wanted that proportion to be about anywhere between 60 and 100%, I would fit a camera on that position one and then zoom in depending on how far it is. And that's the, that's the beauty about having a variable lens. Next question, how to best position your cameras then? Well, we always advise on um, a, a rough sketch before you're purchasing your CCTV system. And in an ideal scenario, you've got a mix. You're both observing and identifying. And the reason for that is you want a general observation in your property, but when the individual comes closer to the entry exit, whereby your security is now heightened because your job is to protect your entry exit points in your home, to protect the perimeter of your home. So as they come closer, you want to be able to identify them. Now, how do you do that? Well, either you bring the camera physically closer to them in the example of a front doorbell camera, or you opt for variable lenses, whereby you can zoom in, um, zoom into their, into their face. And thereby, in an ideal scenario, you've got two types of angles. You've got in this, these two images we've shown, um, you're capturing their, their identity when they come to your front door. But otherwise, you've got a camera for general observation, and you could apply that same principle to the back of your garden whereby you might want an observational camera just to make sure your back garden is all secure, where let's say your kids are playing, but if someone was to approach your patio door, um, you'd want a camera facing them 
and you want the proportion of their height to be anything but anything between 60 and 100 percent of the length of the screen and that ensures you can easily identify their face thereby giving better information to um, your your security officers finally now we haven't touched yet on megapixels um, and you'll be seeing these numbers all over right one megapixel two megapixel 8 megapixel, 4K, 8K, the numbers just keep going up and up these days. Um, and while it is important and it's great to see technology has improved since the time I was fitting, I've been fitting since I was a, I was a child, uh, we used to fit analog cameras going down 380 TV lines. Um, so it's great to see the numbers are popping up. But one very important thing to remember is correct positioning and having the right lens angle is more important than the megapixel. Now I'm not saying here go for the lower megapixel, do whatever is in your budget, but the megapixel is not as important. So before, if you're if you're about to spend an extra 30 or 40 percent on you know super duper features and perhaps you can't afford it, hold on and I'm going to give you two examples of this. So let's say the goal was to identify an individual at, um, at an entrance, your front door. Now having a 4K camera in a complete like observational mode, let's say the proportion of the guy's, um, the, the length of his height is about 10% in relation to the monitor, that's not gonna be as good as having a one megapixel which is able to clearly capture the identity. Um, although it's a lower resolution because it's making a large proportion, it generally will, will have more pixels when you count the overall height of the monitor compared to the smaller 4K version. And if you were to flip that, if the goal was to observe an area, so let's say your goal is to observe a wider area, whether you're monitoring traffic or let's say you're monitoring your, uh, your front driveway. And let's say you had a 4K camera with a variable lens zoomed in, um, zoomed in too much. But if you had initially set the goal as you wanted to observe the area, well then, just by having a 4K camera, you might have missed, sorry, by having a 4K camera with an incorrect lens angle, let's say zoomed in too much, might allow you to miss what happened, let's say outside, if there was a robbery or whatever with the, your neighboring property, well, by having the wrong lens angle, you've missed out. And therefore, it's very important to ask these two principal questions. Always remember these two questions. What do I want to see? And why do I want to see it? I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. Um, you can email us to roboxacademy at gmail.com. And if there are other topics you'd like to see us make videos for, please do let us know um, either by email or in the description. We are looking at the next phase of our project here at Robox Academy is helping uh, those who want to start off a career in the security industry um, and providing you the right tools just based on, um, I would say, maybe 25 years of experience myself, but we've got a small team of us who still work in the industry. So if there is anything you'd like guidance with, please drop us an email or leave a comment in the description. And thank you if you've made it to this end of this video. Thank you for watching it all. and We hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.